Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Brian, and as you saw in the title, in this video, we're gonna be making our own cool shirt for the race car. If you've ever been to the southeast in the summer, then you know the heat and humidity is almost unbearable. I've spent countless hours inside my car on grid, completely soaked, head to toe in sweat, and it gets borderline dangerous to the point where you're just chugging water and your heart is pounding out of your chest, and there's no way that you can perform at the level that you want to when you're that uncomfortable. And unless you're blessed enough to have AC in your race car, which most of us aren't, then the best solution you can do is run a cool shirt in your car to try and keep your core temperature down. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what a cool shirt is, it's a cooler that holds ice water and pumps that water through a t-shirt so you're not just sitting there dying when you're in your race car. Now, there is a company called Cool Shirt System that creates a plug and play setup. You can put it right in your car and it's fantastic. It is top of the line, but you do have to pay for it. It's a little on the expensive side. And while I would love to purchase the entire setup, I just can't stomach paying that much for the whole system when I know I can create it myself. So that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be about half the cost of the normal system and should function exactly the same. Now everything in front of me here is what you'll need to get this thing in your car. We'll go ahead and start with this cooler. This is a 19 quart cooler made by a company called Angle. They're very nice, high quality. And if you put them side by side to the actual Cool Shirt System cooler, they are pretty much identical. Everything from the latches to the mounts for the straps on the side seems like it's exactly the same. Don't quote me on that being the same, but side by side comparison, they do seem extremely identical. So I went ahead and ordered one of these coolers so I will be able to use their chassis mount to strap this down to the car itself. They're very nice quality. They have a foam seal to keep it watertight so you don't get sloshing out of the cooler while you're driving on track. And they also come in a lot of funky colors as well. The only one that I could get in a short amount of time was a baby blue color. I'll go ahead and insert a picture here to show you what that looked like. There's no way that was going to work for me. So I found a blue that matches my race car and I went ahead and painted this blue and also kept the white trim to go with the theme of my car itself. Now we also have the Cool Shirt System t-shirt. There's a few different ones on the market that you can purchase, but the actual Cool Shirt System shirt itself is definitely the nicest you can get. It's a bit on the expensive side. It's gonna be the most expensive part that you have out of everything here, but it's for sure worth it to get the shirt. As you see, they have water lines throughout the entire front and back of the shirt. Very well designed. It's definitely gonna keep you cool while you're sitting in your car on grid, and it comes out to some quarter inch hoses for the inlet and outlet of the t-shirt. It is a bit on the stiff side, but all in all, this is definitely gonna be the highest quality shirt that you can get. I have some female quick disconnect connectors. They have a few different kinds. They have ones you have to push a button to remove, and they have these safety fittings as well, so if the car catches on fire and you have to get out of there as quick as possible, this will detach so you're not actually stuck to the car. I have some male fittings that came with the t-shirt themselves. These will connect to the inlet and outlet of the t-shirt. We have a bilge pump. This is a 500 gallon per hour pump that I just got locally. They're designed for boats, but it works perfect for our setup, what we're gonna do. I have some three quarter hose that will connect to the bilge pump, as well as some quarter inch ID hose that's gonna run from the cooler to the shirt and also return back to the cooler. And we have an assortment of fittings here that we're going to use for our bulkhead fittings on the cooler as well as some adapters to push down in size to connect to the size of the t-shirt. Now like I said this is everything here that you will need at least in order to get this going. I do not have the actual chassis mount for the cooler to the car so I'm having a hard time finding that. For the sake of this video we will be able to get this built and get it working. I just won't have a good way of mounting it to the car until I get that mount. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is find a good spot inside the cooler to mount the bilge pump. Now I already know that if I put the pump over on this side, I can run all my water lines over to the opposite end of the cooler, which will then run over to the driver's side of the vehicle. So I'm gonna whip up some JB Weld. I'm gonna scuff up the bottom of this mount as well as a little spot on the cooler so we can get the JB Weld to adhere extremely strong. And I'm gonna put a couple screws inside this mount as well, just to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere.
then we'll drill two very small holes through the back top side of the cooler so we can feed our power and ground wires through. And then we'll install the bilge pump and feed the wires through. And honestly, these holes are such perfect sizes, I probably don't even need to put any silicone on, but I'm going to anyways, just to be safe. So we'll leave a little bit of slack here. We'll put a little bit of silicone on these guys. And then pull them through, just like so. So we'll go ahead and start with the three quarter bulkhead. I wanna line it up right in line with the bilge pump. I would really like to make this a nice tight snug to where I can actually thread it on so I know I'm getting the best seal possible. And I want it just like that, nice and snug where I don't even need any silicone, but we're gonna go ahead and do it anyways. And then we're gonna go ahead and put Teflon tape and pipe dope on all of our fittings and pre-make everything that we can. And these bushings I'm making here connects this from three quarter from the bilge pump down to quarter inch for our hose that runs to the shirt. I know this is a little excessive. I could have ordered a three quarter female by quarter inch barb fitting, but it would have had to be online and it would have taken up to a week, if not longer to get here. So I'm just gonna whip this up. No one's really gonna notice it anyways. All right, so we have these fittings in. I put a bunch of JB Weld around both sides. And what I had to do was thread this 90 into the cooler like you saw, but I actually had to make a bigger opening on the outer skin to get this fitting to go inside the housing here. And it sandwiches this inner liner. And then I just filled that void with a bunch of JB Weld. It's extremely strong. This thing's stout. It's not gonna go anywhere. Now we need to start working on getting the return fittings into the cooler. I would really like to have it right here beside um, in a perfect world if I could put it over here on the complete opposite corner of the bilge pump so the return water that we'll call the warm water will actually enter the cooler at the complete opposite corner so it can cool all the water down but this is gonna hold a good amount of fluid anyway so I don't think it matters so we're gonna mount this fitting right here beside this one so the lines on the outside are nice and close together and we can keep it clean running to the driver's side. And just like the other fitting, we'll get this hole nice and snug to where the fitting threads in just to ensure we get a nice tight seal. And this is what I was talking about for this side. The threads don't actually come through the outer skin, so there's nothing to thread this onto. So we have to make this hole a lot larger to actually insert the female end inside the cooler and then thread it in. And just like over here, we'll fill that whole void with epoxy and it'll be nice and solid. So now that we have our fittings attached to the cooler, they're nice and solid. I want to get this three quarter hose and get our length from the bilge pump up to the first fitting. Now this is pretty universal for any kind of barb fittings. Just to help them get on, use a little Dawn dish soap because it will completely dry out. So it'll help lubricate the fitting to get it on nice and easy. All right guys, so it's the next day. I've given the JB Weld about 24 hours to sit. It is more than solid. I should not have any problems with these fittings whatsoever. 
Now, before we go ahead and take this outside and start installing it into the car, there's one more thing I want to do. I have this pigtail for the bilge pump coming out the back of the cooler, and I want to make this removable for when I have to take this out to clean it or service it or anything. So what I'm going to do is install this waterproof connector. That way we can have a quick disconnect for the wires on the back of the cooler. We'll install the butt connectors for it. One, two, and once the connections are made, just heat up the heat shrink tube. So the male connector is finished on the cooler side. When we go install this into the car, we'll wire up the female end of the plug to the chassis, and then we have a good solid way of removing it if we need to service the cooler at all. And now that the cooler's all finished, we'll just take everything outside, figure out a spot we want to mount it in the car. So the next thing we want to do is figure out where in the car we want to mount this cooler. I already removed the passenger seat just to make this process a little bit easier. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I do not have the actual chassis mount for the cooler itself. That'll be here in a couple days. But for now, we can at least figure out where we want to put it and get it set in there so we can get our water lines ran towards the driver's side area. Now, in a perfect world, I would really like to have the cooler on the ground behind the passenger seat. But there's a couple problems with this. This cooler is a pretty good size. So it's going to require me to push the passenger seat a good bit forward. Honestly, probably a good like six inches more forward. Plus, to get this lid open, the cage gets in the way. So this would actually have to be up here to where I really can't even have a passenger seat in. So that kind of forces us to put this in the back seat area. Now this isn't my perfect spot I would like to have it, but this does help with weight distribution. I can still have a passenger seat in here. It's gonna be a little inconvenient to go around the passenger seat to actually put ice and water inside the cooler, but a cooler this size should definitely be able to hold cold water at least for a solid day. So if I have to do this one or two times throughout a weekend, it really isn't too big of a deal. I do have a way to drain it through the hose over by the shirt on the driver's side, so it's not like I'm gonna to have to pull the cooler in and out a whole lot anyways. Okay, so I changed my mind a little bit on the location for the cooler. I talked about favoring the passenger side and the rear part of the car, but I'm actually gonna move it to the center here, mainly just for ease of access. It'll be a little bit of a pain if I have it on this left side to really get around the seat and through the cage, but being right here in the middle is gonna make it just a little bit easier. So before we go ahead and start running the water lines, I wanna get the electrical part of this all done. So the plan for that for the ground, I'm either going to A, just run a wire through this firewall right to the battery on the back side, or I'll just ground it to the chassis somewhere right here by the cooler. And for the positive, I'm gonna follow this harness that I have. It goes all the way up to the front of the car, up to a power distribution block that I have right here in the engine bay. This comes straight off the positive terminal of the battery. So I'm gonna hook up the positive from this connection run it inside the car and hook it up to a spare switch that I have here. I'm gonna put a fuse in line between the switch and the distribution block. And then from the switch, it's gonna run down to the cooler. So that way I can turn it on and off from my control panel and I'll have that in line fuse. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. So here's my battery location. It's right in the center of the car. The cooler is just right on the other side of this firewall, like six inches away. But what I'm gonna do for the ground is just run it down through this little hole I have down here where the positive wires already ran. I'm gonna follow up the negative wire and connect it right here to the terminal. So we'll route this wire from the inside of the car to the trunk. Just like so, we'll put an eye connector on here so we can hook it up to the terminal. Now the only connector that I have is one that's meant for a much thicker gauge wire. So what I like to do when I'm in this scenario is strip the wire back a bit further than I need. And then we'll just fold this in half to make it a thicker connection. So it'll then work for a bigger terminal. And 
And then we're gonna tie this in to the other end of our plug. I apologize if you have a bad view. I can't really get you back in here because of the cage. Okay, so there's our ground connected to the plug. And then we will run our positive wire. Now I have a hole through my firewall for my main engine harness. I'm just gonna feed this right through there. And here is our inline fuse. I'm just gonna cut this right in the middle of that line that I just ran that's gonna be from our battery power going to the switch. Now I do not know what kind of power this pump's gonna draw, so I'm not too sure what size fuse to put in here. I'm gonna start low with a seven and a half. If this decides to blow, then I'll go up to a 10. And this end will cut and just wire it right to this power distribution block. All right, so now we have all of our electrical done. We have our main power with our inline fuse that runs to the switch. The switch will then feed power to the pump inside the cooler. And we do have the cooler grounded to the battery like you saw as well. So all of our electrical is done. Now I should probably go ahead and test it, but I'm sure it's gonna be just fine. So from here, the next thing we're gonna do is run our water lines from the cooler out towards the driver's side. I'm gonna leave some extra slack in there, and then we're gonna pour some water inside the cooler, hook up our main connector, and just flip the switch and make sure the pump is working. And here's our quarter inch hose. This is the same size that they have for the fittings for the cool shirt that I have. I got 12 feet, so I'm gonna cut this in half, and then we'll run our feed and return just outside the car. So we'll take our feed line from the pump, hook it up, and then our return line from the shirt. All right, moment of truth. Okay, nice. It's a good flow. It doesn't seem like too much pressure. That'll work for me. All right, so I'm sitting in the car, I have my shirt on. It is a little stiff, but it's not too bad. Now I wanna find a good length to cut the hose on the shirt end, as well as the chassis end going to the pump. So I do have a lot of this kind of zip tied to the side. I'll show you right now. I'm gonna run it up the side of the cage and I wanna have it somewhere where it's gonna be easy to see where I won't forget, you know, just in case I hop out of the car. I don't wanna keep putting a bunch of tension on it. I did opt to get the safety pull connectors so if i have to hop out in case of a fire like i said in the beginning it'll pull apart but i don't know how much force that's going to require so i want to have this somewhere easy to see where i won't forget it i can quickly disconnect it and hop out of the car so we have our female and male connectors all we got to do now is just connect them Turn on the pump, see how it feels. There's our water going in. Oh, oh yeah. This is nice, I could just hang out like this. This is definitely gonna keep core temperatures way down. And I don't even have ice in it yet and it still feels really good. All right guys, so the cool shirt's in, it's done. I'm excited to see how it's gonna be on track when it's actually really hot out. Like I said in the beginning, I'm still waiting to find a uh, mount for the cooler from Cool Shirt. I think I found one and I should be able to get it here in a couple days. All right, never mind. I'm just kidding. It's the next day and I just got the mount overnighted to me for the cooler. This is the mount here. It's from Cool Shirt. I already know it's going to fit this cooler perfect. So we'll just find a good spot to put a couple rib nuts to the chassis. And it came with two Velcro straps so you can attach the tabs on the side of the cooler to the mount. Now just to make pilot holes, I'm gonna be using these like two and a half to three inch self tappers. These are way too long to make permanent, but this will at least just making the pilot holes easier. All 
Okay, so the rib nuts are in. I'm gonna put in the bolts, and I have these rubber washers from work that I'm gonna use to separate the bracket from the car just to save on some vibration. All right, guys, well, I'm not sure what happened to the video here. I lost all of the sound, but as you can see, we are installing the bracket onto the car, making sure that it is nice and secure, and then we go ahead and put the cooler into the bracket. Now, this here actually fits like a glove. Even without these straps, I'm sure it'd be fine, but we install them anyways just to make sure that it is nice and secure. All right, guys, I got the seat back in the car. I got everything all finalized. It looks nice back here. Everything's tidy. All the water lines are ran to the side of the car and up zip tied to the roll cage right where I want them. I'm extremely happy with how this turned out. It should work really well when I actually get some ice in it and we're out in the heat to give it a good test, which we should be able to do here soon. But I appreciate you guys watching. Like always, like and subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Thank you.